major hub today on our discussion segment is uh, to look at uh, the International Human Rights Day that was actually yesterday. And of course, you know that uh, the issue of human rights has since begun for quite some time now. It's uh, almost a kind of uh, an issue talking about centuries, decades and all that. And uh, you hear people often ask the question, do you really know your rights? Big question that people will ask. And uh, here in Nigeria, we celebrated, we observed it yesterday, uh, the Human Rights Day. And uh, Edo State, too, we also observed it yesterday. And the theme of this year's uh, celebration is youth uh, standing up for human rights. And uh, just yesterday, I was watching uh, some of uh, you know reports on the, the uh, day, and uh, we uh, saw where the uh, Secretary of uh, the National Human Rights Commission in Nigeria you know, actually said that uh, human rights situations in Nigeria are good. Well, this has elicited, elicited uh, you know, reactions and uh, counter-reactions uh, from, uh, you know, people around. Well, to look at all this this morning, we are so privileged to have leftist Omobude Ago, who is the coordinator general of Edo Civil Society uh, organization. You're welcome to this program this morning on our TV. Now, uh, uh, leftist, let's start from uh, the secretary general of the National Human Rights Commission. Uh, who said that uh, human rights situations in Nigeria are good? Um, <clears throat> it depends on where he's looking at, where he's, the point, his point of view and where he's uh, looking at it from. Um, we, at uh, the, our own commemoration yesterday, we fought some of those um, statements openly because I think that he shouldn't have said that at this time because no, there's no worst time ever than now that the human rights um, um, issues has been under serious threat. Considering the things that, they want, things that just happened just yesterday with the Soho Rays uh, issue, the Abba Janingo issue, uh, the, a lot of journalists are suffering a, a whole lot of um, op uh, uh, oppressive um, attacks. Um, <clears throat> the, the National Assembly trying to come up with um, the hate uh, speech, speech bill. bill, and you say human rights. <clears throat> And the, the secretary of the Human, uh, National Human Rights Commission comes up to say that it is improving, then I think that he must be talking from another angle, not from the angle that we are also in from. Mm. Because this, we would have expected him to say that human rights is in its worst, worst time in, demo, in our, democracy, our democracy right now, mm. not the other way around. But again, we can again understand that he is also, um, um, the National Human Rights Commission is a creation of the states. And its staff and members are on the pay of the state. They couldn't have spoken contrary. Otherwise, somebody would have been um, would have been preparing to lose um, a salary or lose a job. Yeah, but Bobde, what seems to be the issue? It's uh, because uh, the secretary is a human rights activist the way you are, and. Uh, for me, personally, it seems that uh, you have people say that the situations are good. Some activists in Nigeria say that are good. Some say that human rights situations are not good. Now, it seems that human rights activism is even not going on the same uh, direction. Um, let me quickly um, respond to the first part of your, of, your, of your question, to say that some activists are saying human rights situation is good, some saying it's not good. I cannot say I've heard any activists real activists in this country that say human um, right, um, human right, um, respect for human rights is good or improving. No. As it were. No, not at all. We are, in, we are in the worst time of it right now. You are a media a practitioner. We see how many um, journalists have been incarcerated recently because they tried to air their view. The journalists that, that expose the collection of dollars kicked back from the Kano State Governor. We know what, what he went through. The Abba Jalingo, we know what he's going through. We know a whole lot of it around town that they show their own just yesterday that DSS have refused to release on bail. And when they eventually do after a court of competent jurisdiction have, 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 have uh, placed a fine of 100 million era, they, they released him 24 hours, hours after. And they arrested him in corporate yeah, with all It said that Shuori breached uh, the bail conditions that uh, were given to him. How could Shuori breach bail condition? A man that's, that's in detention, how could he breach bail condition while, while he's still in the court uh, premises? How? Oh, that's why I said the human rights, um, um, respect for human rights is at its worst in these times. It could get better, then we'll change our language. But for now, 
Nobody can tell me that it is better and improving. No, it is not. Okay. We are now, getting to the worst, in the worst time of it. All right. Now, now, now let's look at uh, Edosco. For, uh, for, I think for like five days now, you've had, uh, you know, activities and all that. So uh, can you tell us, uh, you know, how the issues were, the yes. events were? Yes. Um, the inter uh, you, uh, World Human Rights Week mm -hmm. is always celebrated from the 5th to on the 10th. Okay. And we brought in all kind, of, all kind of activities so that we can reach out to people who can draw them closer and make them see that we are human activists and it's not a close opportunity for everybody to participate. So the first day we had a football novelty match with the NBA, our, these are our closest partners, because we are not lawyers, they are the lawyers, the ones that go to court on our behalf doing a lot of pro bonus. We, have, we had a novelty match. The following day we had uh, Dr. Bayona, the former Attorney General of uh, at, um, Commissioner for Justice and yeah. uh, Attorney General of the State. States, yeah. Yes, who came to talk about um, some issues, <laughs> very salient issues, and made, pronounce, uh, pronou made some pronouncements on that day. The day after, we had Barista Delek Benedion, the very renowned Barista Delek Benedion, um, who is a very close, uh, one of our close lawyers, Associates. was there. So we had Barista Prince Agboka was also there to talk about corruption. Okay. After we had a, a rally with uh, EFCC mm. in, uh, on the 9th, which was the anti corruption day, we also, had, we also organized a free heads. A free um, um, head, um, uh, head um, check, eye free eye check, and um, blood donation. We also made people to voluntarily uh, donate, donate blood mm. through the National uh, Blood Donation uh, Transmission uh, Agency mm. so that we could also contribute to society. And many of our comrades donated uh, blood. Those are all part of it. Then, yesterday was the crime, crime all with, um, with the summit mm. where we have um, a big man. <laughs> Uh, Reverend uh, Comrade Reverend oh, Lua Deli Bigbe, yes, the former NSC, uh, the one I almost say the last NSC chairman we have, uh, the former NSC chairman who spoke very, very, very eruditely and, and very uh, encouraging and boosted the morals of many other comrades, young comrades who, who, who had interest to, to, to practice uh, activism. So it was it was great. All right. The, now, basically, uh, on the on the on the background that we just came out from a, a an attack <laughs> by um, uh, sponsored by the state government on no, us, we, we, on we, the we, specialist we, hospital. Let us not uh, uh, let us not digress on that. No, I'm not. Uh, I just say I'm adding to this right, human week. Let's, let's mm. stay focused on the issue mm. now. Uh, mm. uh, what is really the situation with uh, uh, human rights? Let's take Nigeria as a case study. Uh, now, you hear uh, some people will say that uh, a lot of people are not even educated enough to know their rights. Why some will say that, no, it is not because they are not educated enough. It is because over time, often time, you have governments, agencies, uh, policies, programs, uh, you know, deliberately uh, to kind of uh, uh, bottle up uh, uh, the rights of, of the average citizen. Yeah. So what do you think is really the issue? Is it that people are not educated enough to know their rights? Or that government, as is being alleged, that government bottle up the rights of our citizens? <clears throat> I think the best response would have been that um, is both governments have bottled up the, the mental, according to my friend, the mental hobble. I wonder if that English is very correct. The mental hobble of the ordinary man. They created a situation where the poor are so poor that the only thing they think of on a daily basis is how to survive for that day. To the extent that they don't even know how to stand and defend their rights. So for them, every opportunity is to find a Britain, uh, a British place, not cons knowing that even their, their right is the fundamental of the British space. So for us in Edo Civil Society Organization, we try to create connections with people. We have reduced it. We try, we try to avoid this grammar. The grammar I'm speaking now, you notice that I'm struggling to speak it, because we've trained our minds to be able to speak pidgin. The one that everybody can understand, can so understand. that we can carry everybody along. along. Yes. So by that, we also have created study centers everywhere. In the 18 local government of Edo State, we have contact, we have um, uh, study center points there where everybody, whether you went to school, whether you've never been to school, so far you can communicate. You should first know that there is a law. But again, it, it, when, we, when, when, when we say government have bottled up, the idea is, 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 is philosophic. Um, it's, an, it's, a, it's a methodology they, create, they use by removing history from our schools, removing civic education from our schools. Don't say we have civic education. The kind of civic education we have in our schools is not the kind of civic education that should, be in our, that should be in our schools. Many of our students that are in SS123 have never seen the Nigerian constitution before, so they don't even know what's in it. And we think that this um, 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 civic education 
must begin from at least primary three, when children can read and they can comprehend. They should start knowing what they are right about this and what they are right about that. Children should start talking about my right, my right, my right. But you now they don't know. That is why we are seeing on television, you see a, a, a representative who organized a one-day training on a generator repair. And it goes plenty of millions of naira, and it will tell, it will put on television to say we organize the one day training generator. That is a profession that takes another person one year to learn, and it will not still be an uh, an expert. So it's all a process to siphon funds, but they do it in a way to seem as if they are helping you, whereas they are not. It's their pocket they are helping, but citizens don't also know that that thing is wrong. If you try to tell them, though, for them to say hey, hey, at least they can't give us two thousand naira for transport, they give us one pack of rice and one and one uh, bottle of. Uh, of minerals. So for them, it is survival for that day. That is the state that the politicians and our uh, political leaders have placed uh, and the people. So in all, it is, yes, government came up with a deliberate policy or uh, methodology to bottle the people, to keep them ignorant so that they can keep milking, well, well, milking I, I, them. I'll take that as an allegation. <laughs> no, it's belief. a fact. <laughs> it's a fact everywhere. Yeah, but some people don't have the same belief. We are saying the same thing because of the mentality. It is deliberately put there. It is deliberately put there so that the people will, keep, will remain in that cycle. They must keep jumping them like monkeys. So they keep throwing peanuts at them. So we, for us, our responsibility as society, every day we say it. We say we will not stop until the last man is liberated. So the more people we try to reach out, the more we try to share with. And you notice, as many of our commissioners we have come in contact with, that you used to know some time ago we are not that smart. You realize that they have become different people and they are more illuminated, they are more brightened, and they begin to react differently. Why? Because they just only feel feel they just fully realize that they've been in the dark for a very long time now they see the light and they begin to react uh, differently for example we tell when you tell some nigerians that bail is free you don't pay for your freedom your freedom is given to you by the constitution so say i cannot be true now i want to go station when i don't go pay money even though you go there and uh, and practice it in their presence and get them out free the next time if they are held they still think that it is an exclusive um, duty for you yeah. to know and to do, not for them. It is deliberate by the system to position them like that. Okay, what's your assessment on uh, human rights situations in Nigeria? We are um, still at the developing stage because I could say in other states we have done bits quite better than many other states in the country. And, that, and we have 36 states, including the Federal Capital Territory. So we can, we can, we can manage to say 37 states, because the Federal Capital Territory has local government. Uh, yeah, yeah. So let's say 37 states. So if only one state is striving, that means we have not done, we have not done much. Mm. So we think that we will not stop. We'll just keep pushing. We'll keep doing our best. There were people before us. Felani Kolak Bokoti was there. Bek Okoti, Gani, Fao, Emi, and a whole lot of them did all they did. And that's why we are who we are now. So we all, we just need to keep doing our own. Is still very at the weak side, and the politicians rejoice over that. But we we'll keep doing as much as we can do. Now, <laughs> yeah, you, you discover that uh, oftentimes we have issues with uh, civility. Yes. I mean, the way people should go about normal civil um, uh, issues in town, uh, normal decorum issues in town, and all that. At the expense of uh, you know human rights, you hear people tell you that. Look, it is my right. At the expense of uh, uh, civil civility. Now, how do you go about this issue? Letting people know that, okay, this is your right, but your right stops there, so that you don't uh, uh, breach uh, civil civility and all that. It is true that where one man's right end, that's where another man comes Starts, yeah. But again, we have a society where the mass majority of people are apprehensive. You just need to understand this first. People don't even know when they are right and when they are wrong. People don't even know where their right began and where their right ends. People are just living, just moving like a zombie. Just going no, by the wind of the, the wind of the societal dictates. Mm. You understand? Yeah. So at, at, in, at such a situation, it becomes difficult for you to explain this you have explained until mm. we keep doing, we just sustain what we are doing now. Telling them, no, you can't do this, you can't do that. Because even the authorities themselves don't want you to know that you have a right. We hear authorities telling people you don't have a right, particularly the military. When you say I have a right, they shut up, you don't have a right. So if the military man... <laughs> <laughs> who should teach citizens about their rights and remind them according to the constitution tell you don't have a right if a policeman when you say oh, sir i have a right to this i say shut up you don't have a right if he tells you by knocking down knocking down your morals in those statements what do you expect that man if he lives there to do he also thinks he doesn't have a right 
and he becomes low in his, in his uh, uh, morale, mm. and he's able to function well. So the system is still what we need to deal with. So for us, like I said, at the civil society organization, we are doing all our best. We've been able to replicate ourselves in 13 states right now. Mm. But those things, it's not, it won't, of course, not as vibrant as we have here. But with, if we are, trusting, we are trusting God that those states could also pick up and if they become as vibrant as we are now, then, of course, we can say we, 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 we've done well uh, in, in the country. And what the question you've asked now will be differently. You will say, oh, you can appreciate that people are now respecting civility in in society, mm. of course, we'll get there. Now, uh, perhaps I may want to ask the question over again. Now, uh, what role do you play for people to know uh, their civil obligations, uh, civil responsibilities, and for them to also know that, look, it is because some people will say that civil obligations are almost the same thing as your right. I mean, for example, it is my right to own a voter's card, yes. it is my right to vote, and if, as soon as I vote, I perform my civil obligation. So, do you do anything to? I'm sure, even if I don't remember, you can remember <laughs> that we were on this set before the last elections yeah. where we had the campaign of Let's Cook, the Let's Cook campaign. Mm -hmm. You say, Let's Cook our votes, it's not for sale. And we've done all of that. Like I said, we do a whole lot. We go around using our resources, our time, our energy to educate people. But you will still see that the people will still act otherwise. Yeah, perhaps, don't you think if you let people know that, look, these civic responsibilities are actually your rights, they may want to embrace them more. Because for some people, civic responsibilities, I beg, it's not my business. It's, it's uh, you know, for some other people that even as, are more educated, more than them. But we let them know that, look, these obligations, these responsibilities are actually your rights. Don't you think they will, they will embrace them more? As much as we teach them, without giving them anything. That is how the political class teach them the contrary of what we are teaching them, putting some change in their hand. Because the political class need those, their civic power yeah. to attain their own uh, positions. Mm. You understand? That's what I said earlier. I said they like to gather them as monkeys and keep throwing peanuts at them. That was, that was the expression I was trying to give. We do as much. But again, a man that does not have food in his house and does not have the, he doesn't know the next opportunity to have food, and one man, one politician comes to him and says, sell your vote and I'll give you 2K. You think it will not take special grace for that man to reject all of that? So what you're saying is that poverty is perhaps one issue it is with, deliberate. with human rights. Yes, deliberate. The politicians have deliberately put the people down mentally, psychologically, morally. They deliberately don't want to create jobs. They deliberately don't want to create opportunities. They deliberately don't want the pastor to work. They deliberately don't want many of those things to work. They deliberately keep increasing taxes and making life more difficult for the people. They deliberately make rice hard to, <laughs> to buy. It is a deliberate policy. We know one big politician those days that insisted that one uh, uh, local government chairman must be dropped at that time because he was making the people of his uh, local government um, uh, comfortable by providing a lot of the amenities. And he said, if you make them comfortable, they'll become so strong and they become wise, and the next time they'll start challenging you. He said, put them, make them poor. So that, he said, don't ever give them all. Give them small. That will not be enough. So that they will always, they'll keep coming back to ask for. So you realize that it's a deliberate policy. Mm. So all of that, I say, we are talking, but we are trusting God that we can be able to galvanize the people to understand that we can put pull resources together and start creating the difference. And Edo CSU already do that. Mm. That's why we already have the our transport scheme. Mm. We have created 20 uh, jobs directly and indirectly more jobs. We have made the transport, uh, proving that the transport, uh, transportation can be cheaper than even what the government is providing. We have a target to have a hospital so that we can show people that healthcare can be as cheap as it should be. It's not as expensive as a claim. We just started. You, we, anyway, we, I don't want to do all that. Uh, that we have a book club. We want to play. Yeah, but I don't want to do all that commercial. As well. No, it's not commercial. I'm trying yeah. to say. I'm, I'm talking about what we intend to do mm. to reach out to the people's mind. What we do is public. It's simple, all right. Now, now I'm only, I really want you to look at something that uh, you know people have also expressed worry over. That um, it appears that as much as African uh, societies are embracing democracy, 
Uh, that is the way they are also having issues with human rights. One would have expected that it ought, it ought to be the other way around. Mm -hmm. I mean, those days when we had uh, some uh, societies in Africa, some, gov um, you know, have military rule and all that, we didn't have the kind of problems that we have with human rights the way it is now. What do you think are the issues? It's because... I'll tell you, those that were on this side. Is it that democracy no. gives problems no, no, to democracy. human rights? Democracy is so. not the problem. It's the practitioners, our kind of practitioners of democracy that are doing, what, that's doing all of this. You could say we are in democracy, but most of those people running our democratic system are also the military people, either directly in, in the military or indirectly in the military. So their mentality hasn't changed. That is one. Two. We also have those that were not part of the fight for democracy, mm. occupying the, the democratic uh, offices. So they don't, they don't have value for what they have. Yeah. That is also part, uh, it's also part of it. Three, it was that the, er the, the era of the, 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 the pro-democracy um, um, uh, activists at that time that did not take it over but allowed some persons who didn't have business in so, it taking it over is also uh, an uh, issue. Part of, it's, yes. It's also part of why we are here. Then our foundation mm. is, also a, is also a big uh, reason why our democracy is problematic. Because democracy in other climates makes society better, easier, and more accommodative. But our own makes it more tyrannic. Why? Because tyrants were the ones that took over not the pro-democracy activists. Well, you cannot say so. <laughs> you cannot say so. All right, we also have that the program is still this morning on our TV, and uh, we're looking at uh, the International Human Rights Day retrospect. That was actually yesterday, and we have leftist Omobu there who are here doing some great talks on uh, human rights situations in Nigeria. Now, the theme of this year's uh, celebration is uh, youth standing up for human rights. Stand up for human rights. That seems to be a big problem. Yes. Now, when we're talking about human rights, the youth at times are being reported not to even know their rights. What are the issues? Now, all that will, will, will take us back to where we started the discussion from. It's a deliberate policy by government. Deliberate policy for it's a youth? A deliberate uh, no, no, policy by get the youth not to now. be involved. As I'm a youth, you mean if I don't know my rights, it is the problem of the government? I mean, yeah. that ought to be my own problem. You are speaking the way you are speaking now because of the foundation you are, the foundation you are built on. And of course, I expect other youths out there to also aspire to know their rights. How many I mean, I aspire to know my rights. So, you aspire. No, you, I aspire. I mean, I, I, had to, I, had to, I had to read to know my rights. Because first and foremost, have, I know that my, base, my first right as an individual is right to life. I mean, I don't need government to tell me that because I do know that is a shrine in my constitution. So I don't need the government to, let, to tell me to read up. Look, give God thanks that you had the opportunity to go to school where you could read A, B, C, D at all. Our schools, that should be a foundation for the future leaders, what are their states? What are the states of the secondary schools? What are the states of the tertiary institutions? But the question is, the youth, do they aspire? How can they aspire when they don't have a foundation? How can you roof a house that you have never, you didn't set, set its foundation? How do you build it to that extent? If the bedrock of every developed society is education. Yeah, but a moment ago, are you, are you telling me that in your own time, be sincere, did you actually had, did you go through the education that you expected to go through? I mean, those days I, when we were growing up. As I was up, growing up, I didn't have expectations, but my parents had expectations. But of course, you didn't get the expectation, and of course, you aspired. You struggled through. It's because we are here. The day you travel to America and you meet your mates, you will start hating your government. You will realize that they have wasted the best part of your life. Sincerely speaking, at this age, Barack Obama was already president of America. <laughs> so the day you live here now and say you want to become counselor of your world because you want to make impute, that day you will realize that something is wrong. The point I'm trying to say is it's a deliberate policy by those elites to make sure that our youths don't get educated. They will just create a building without creating a school. Even if they create a school, it's a school without education. Because they don't ever want you to get liberated. Because if you get liberated, you will come and struggle power with them. They don't and want perhaps you also all. want to say that the youths are even only liberating themselves. I mean, take, for example, the recent court killings in Benin. Because I mean, they don't it, know it, how it, to. No, I'm over there. Now, what we're saying is that for a youth that knows that 
his primary right as an individual is right to life. Mm. I mean, I expect him also to know that another youth also has that right too. Everybody has right to his or her life. Why will a youth take up a gun, take, us, uh, take up an axe and kill another youth? You, you want to blame the government for that too? Yes, because that is the direction that they have been educated of. If the government has set up institutions to direct them the positive way, it will be difficult for them to go the negative way. Train up a child the way a child should grow, so that when he's old, he will not depart from it. Now, what is the training that they are stuck to, to the girls? Somebody taught them that. We, yes, in our, in our World Human Rights Summit yesterday, mm. we raised this as part of our discussions, to appeal to parents to have time for their children. Some parents wake up, in the, they leave the house as early as 6 a.m., and they don't get back until 8 p.m. So the, the children don't see their parents going out, and they are going to bed before when their parents get back. So who teaches these children? The streets and society. What will society teach them? What to see now? I think courtism is, a, is, is, is condemnable, highly condemnable. But they that are to correct these activities themselves are the leaders of the court. They are the ones sponsoring it. They are the ones developing ideas around but it. But you don't have proof to that. We have. <laughs> you have proof to that? Yes, sir. It's in, your, it's in the news. I think you have proof. Uh, wait, in the wait. House of Assembly, we saw some time when they had crisis in the House of Assembly. Yeah. I wasn't for the same that. House of Assembly raising up a bill. They, you you know. Yes, because they deceive themselves. No, you But they don't so. deceive us. You cannot say so. Listen, I I'm mean, going. for a house for a house to have raised up, to have uh, uh, sponsored Who a bill. Those that were sponsoring that bill. We spoke about it that time. I said they should first clean themselves. When they had crisis in the House of Assembly, what class and category of people did we see? What were the things they exhibited? With what kind of boy, what kind of um, 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 backup or supporters did they bring? Were they not the same court people? Were we not in this state where we had a governor who was paying uh, the, the several court groups monthly? No, you, but you cannot say so. We, 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 you don't have proof to that. We came to this same no, studio. You cannot, you we came to this same studio and raised that same alarm. Yeah, but I said that is the sponsorship. That we, once had a governor, that we once had a governor in this state that was paying cuts. Uh, is that yes, it, it, it was a secret. Do you have proof to that? I think you have proof. Go, go, go. No, you you I'm not there. sure. That's not true. <laughs> they we, were we, paying them, and we came on this station. No, that's not and true. Said we, came uh, on we, this we, we, we may hear of rumor. We may hear of allegation. It doesn't mean that we have proof. Because when you say proof, it means that it's factual. Okay. It's tangible. Can I help you remember now? Mm. One time, the governor called the inspector general of police, mm. who was in at that time. Mm. I said, get hold of all these boys because of the accusers are getting too much. And they had all their leaders. All these leaders they had were all SAs, executive directors, in that government. Mm. They all had executive positions in that government. And they were the ones that were harassing every other person that wasn't supporting that government. Well, that we time. understand that some of these uh, organizations are registered organizations, and at times <laughs> some people say that they are court organizations and all that. I think we should be able to differentiate when they between become, these. When they become, if the Edo Civil Society organization is a registered organization, mm. and tomorrow we become, we start placarding, uh, placarding guns, and we start, you start hearing that we are not doing killings and all of that. Will, you still, will our registration still matter or our activities? But instead of blaming such organizations, why don't you try to blame some individuals who do the, uh, you know, the very unneedful? If, members of Edo, if a member of Edo Civil Society is caught in armed robbery, mm. I'm sure nobody will remember his name. As soon as they see Edo Civil Society, they start talking about Edo Civil Society. Mm. If a, a staff of ITV is found wanting in one activity that shouldn't be, the name of that staff will not be remembered, but the people could to say he's a staff of uh, ITV. ITV. So I think that the organization has its own hierarchy and its own structures. Mm. Hence, they should be able to redefine and redirect the organization properly. Otherwise, when its members begin to per uh, perpetrate such evil that society uh, detests, they should call themselves and say that is not the direction. Otherwise, the organization loses its value and begins to get all of this embarrassment. Mm. We saw one video deep for yesterday. One of, the organization, one of those boys killed another boy and brought out his heart and started drinking his blood. And that organization has a name. It's in the public domain. What I expect that that organization, whether we call it a court or not, will come out and make a public uh, uh, pronouncement, apprehend those their members and hand them over to police and say that is not what we represent. But hence they don't do that. It shows that they are in, it not represent that they are in agreement with it. Just like we will say, the DSS are embarrassing so worry and embarrassing nation, the nation in that activities. People are not pointing finger at the presidency 
I said, if the presidency is not involved, the president would have since called the DSS to order. Yeah, but, yes, but, but, but statutory, the DSS has its roles and responsibilities and all that. You mean you no, need the president to tell the DSS yes, what the DS, to do? the DSS it reports directly to the presidency. It's under the office of the presidency. Certainly, and the DSS has the responsibility to clamp down on anyone or any group that d does anything, no, you know, no. ultra-vires the, the government. The, the DSS is a creation of the law. It is not a law unto itself, whatever. And the DSS has a responsibility have, to the government, is, no, to the no, government of the day. No, that responsibility. Yeah. What we saw them doing is no longer their responsibility, mm. but an embarrassment to human rights and to the nation. But that's what you say. So we're still <laughs> at the presidency. Would have called them to order and say, yes, we know you are trying to protect the sanctity of Nigeria, but the way you are going about it is embarrassing us. Can you, do you understand? And come out to apologize to Nigerians. And Nigerians will feel respected. Mm. And the international community will see us in that same direction. Anyway, we really don't have time. Now, uh, just one last question before yes. I let you go. How do you see human rights situations uh, between now and, uh, you know, because the, the goal is Vision 2030. That's yes. about some 11 years from now. Yes. So how do you see human rights situations in Nigeria? It all depends on how much, uh, how much and how much contributions yeah. the people make mm -hmm. uh, uh, at it. Um, but I think that we, the human rights society is growing, is mm -hmm. developing, mm -hmm. and to get even better mm -hmm. um, the way we are going, yes. Um, and I think that we have um, more of the listening um, government and uh, many other people who are not getting interested in holding political offices and they seem to be the ones that will respect um, um, the human rights um, the human rights um, vision on to 2020. So I, I, I can't say we will we'll progress. I, I, I will say we will we'll progress. All right, thank you so much. I, I'm so proud of you, Mobudi. I will you. anytime I have you on set. I, I, I'm one of those that follow you secretly, uh, particularly at uh, the Edo uh, Civil Society Organization. Thank you. And uh, that's been uh, Comrade or Mobudi, leftist. Comrade, can I no. say comrade now? No. Leftist, leftist of Bobo Diago. <laughs> All right, leftist of Bobo Diago, <laughs> the, the coordinator general of Edo Civil Society Organizations, you know, talking about uh, the uh, Human Rights International Day. That was uh, yesterday. Well, we'll take a short pause now. Let's look at uh, the political situation one more time in Edo State. Please stay tuned.